Facebook, Google, Gerber, Tinder, the iPhone, Priceline, Amazon, they have little in common except one thing. They've all changed the world in which we live. There will be new companies emerging. NACU Logistics, Designated Hitter, eSports Amateur Competitors League, Acom, Afro Kids, Harmony Golf, Social Fit, and more. This is the tech world. African Americans, less than 5% of the workforce in Silicon Valley, the epicenter for all that is tech. The best way to fix the problem is for African Americans and others to create our own opportunities. This is for eSports Business Accelerated Content. Join us in 2018, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Portland, Oregon, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, and more. eSportsInstruction.com So basically what I'm wearing here uh, is just an EEG headset. I'm crossing my hand so you can see I'm not moving a, uh, a mouse with my hand. So Naki Logics is a computer company that specializes in thought-controlled computing logic. We were just awarded a patent in August of 2016 uh, with the U.S. Patent and Trade Office. Uh, uh, I was just awarded a patent uh, in, the, in the Israeli Patent Office. The reason why I haven't submitted a patent in Israel is because I was approached by Israeli intelligence to uh, incorporate this technology into different weapon systems, and I got creeped out, so I submitted it. <laughs> Dave, come up here, man. Come on. Um, <laughs> that's a true story. I know it is. I'm also... Um, uh, and knock on what I'm going through examination phase right now with the European Patent and Trade Office. So I believe that I've come up with the world's first framework of truly, uh, uh, I would say, hardware agnostic thought controlled computing logic. Meaning that this market is identical to the computing market at the beginning of the 1980s. You had Apple, you had the, you know, Bill Gates with DOS at the time, and nobody's computer systems were interoperable with the next guy's computer systems. Yeah. Matter of fact, in the 1800s, Samuel Morse came up with Morse code, and that was done after the telegraph was invented. And then at the telegraph, they were like, okay, we have a telegraph, what do we do with it? Morse code said, Samuel Morse said, hey, I'm going to invent this way of communicating. So what our patent is, is the language uh, of interpreting brain waves, you like that? <laughs> yes. in, in a way that uh, could be useful. So the whole worldwide market, anywhere on the planet, let me get, turn that off so we don't have something that's really inappropriate to accidentally pull up there. <laughs> you never know with YouTube. Okay, so um, the whole worldwide market, by the way, it, it is flood, it's a hardware-centric, thought-controlled computing market, meaning the whole planet, every MIT, I, I don't care if it's Caltech, MIT, Carnegie Mellon, uh, Rutgers University, they all are focusing on hardware-centric solutions. Everybody's trying to come up with the next coolest EEG headset to read brainwaves. However, once you get your brainwaves, nobody knows what to do with them. Nobody knows. Now, you can move a mouse pointer, you can move, everybody's seen the, the news stories, or you can move these uh, artificial limbs down with brainwaves, etc. But what happens if you want to launch a computer application? What happens if you want to uh, get into a virtual reality environment and select menu options without going through a GUI? So our patent is the language, it is the framework of interpreting brain waves in, uh, in a way that allows you to provide complex computer input into information systems without uh, looking at the computer, without talking to the computer, it's not voice recognition, uh, without touching the computer. So what we've done is we uh, have just recently submitted a provisional patent on an earbud device that's going to sit very similarly to a hearing aid. This particular device is going to Bluetooth to your mobile phone. From your mobile phone, it's going to go out. Uh, and what is that going to allow you to do? It's going to allow you to control the planet covertly. Uh, it'll allow you to communicate with an, uh, an IoT device without looking at it, or maybe you want to look at it. Maybe you want to look at the, the lights, turn the lights on, look over the TV, flip it on to CNN, turn the volume up. Uh, and a matter of fact, uh, if somebody were blindfolded, ball gag, tied up, chain, face down to the ground, they could have a two-way conversation with somebody in Paris, France. Now think about that. That sounds creepy, right? It's not theoretical. Uh, it works great in the lab form. I've partnered with a Department of Defense consulting firm in upstate New York uh, that designs all the target acquisition software for the Trident nuclear submarine fleet. Uh, I provided them the design. They kind of took my concept and made it into a, a prototypable, if that's such a word, uh, device. And I'm here seeking uh, one and a half million dollars to uh, finalize 
the prototype of this earbud uh, to create a software framework that would utilize that particular device because I want to get rid of the EEG in a way that uh, uh, EEGs, let me back up just for a second, EEGs in the commercial world, in the residential world, you'll never see them. They're saline, they're, you have to soak the sensors, you have to do a ton of bio training. This particular earbud will not require bio training. I can take it off my head, put it on your head, put it on her head, and you can communicate non-verbally. The, 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 the term I use is technology facilitated mental telepathy. Uh, now, that doesn't mean I'm interpreting brain waves into speech, that's not what we're doing. We're actually, uh, if everybody here were to look at this glass here and try to move it with your mind, uh, and if it moves, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> uh, your brain waves will actually, well, your Mu wave regions within your brain, we're uh, uh, deciphering Mu wave regions to extrapolate imagined direction. So in many ways, if all, do some of you guys, by show of hands, have an unlock code on your phone? You know, you got to... So in a way, uh, we're doing line patterns, imagine line patterns, and associating them to any single word, sentence, or paragraph, which would be pre-recorded, uh, or any kind of procedure, function, execution, etc. Uh, and with that, you could do very exotic stuff. You could do so exotic stuff, or I should say so disruptive stuff, that I believe there's a completely separate market for blocking it. For instance, uh, if you have, uh, this could be miniaturized beyond the earbud. I'm going for a, 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 a kind of a footprint that's very similar to a hearing aid. Uh, you can miniaturize this to the point where I believe it can sit inside the ear canal. Uh, and if you do that, you have students cheat in ways that can never be detected in school. Uh, if you were my attorney, and I'm getting cross-examined by this fine lady right here. You can tell me what to answer, what not to answer in real time, and nobody would know the better. Um, we can rob a casino, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you can sit down at a poker table and you can tell me what you have in the hand, even though you're all hunched over like the Unabomber is on TV and that guy. Uh, you can do very, very, very interesting stuff. So the applications, the applications within gaming uh, are as follows. You can, um, it could act as a second controller. For instance, if you're playing PlayStation or Xbox and you have your controller in your hand, this device in your ear is your second controller, and it will provide covert, undetectable, complex input into the gaming system. Uh, how many of you, by show of hands, has ever put on a virtual reality headset? I, mean, I spoke to a couple of you guys. I will never forget the first day I put on a virtual reality headset. I pulled that off, I was like, Phew, totally blew my mind. One thing you're going to notice when you put it on, you're not in Kansas anymore, number one. And number two, you can't see your hands. Now, you might see what are representations of your hands if you're holding a key fob or anything like that. But with this technology, it is designed to work without a graphical user interface. It's designed to work without looking at a computer monitor. So when you can't see your hands, this technology could easily be licensed to Oculus and uh, all the different uh, HTC Vive and the PlayStation VR in a way that you can provide complex input while you're wearing the headset. Uh, so you really don't need an earbud that would be integrated into the headset and providing complex information to them.